Hello, so if you're watching this video, you are probably a student taking or reviewing Modern Algebra at Hamilton. I'm Professor Gibbons, and I'm going to run through the extended Euclidean algorithm with you via two examples. So the extended Euclidean algorithm allows us to find the GCD of two integers and two other integers that allow us to write that GCD as a linear combination of the integers we were working with originally. Right? So we get, end up with something that looks like d equals am plus bn. Now, in our first example, we'll look at two integers. I'm pretty sure that you could look at these and figure out what the GCD is and even how to write it, write it down as a linear combination. But let me just do a quick example using the Euclidean algorithm to show you, in an easy case, how this is going to go. So we use the division algorithm to write 18 as a multiple of 12 plus some remainder. So our first equation gives us 18 is negative 1 times negative 12 with a remainder of 6. Remember the division algorithm says that there exist integers q and r where m is qn plus r and r is somewhere between 0 and strictly less than the magnitude, the absolute value of the divisor. And when we have a 0 remainder we'll say that our integer divides the other integer. All right, so we've got this one equation. We don't have a zero remainder, so what we're going to do is use the fact that the GCD of M and N is equal to the GCD of N and R. And so here, we're gonna use that to now calculate a new Q and a new R to write 12 as a multiple of six, sorry, negative 12 as a multiple of six plus a remainder. So either you've seen the proof of GCD MN equals GCD NR, or you've concluded completed that as homework. Um, it is true, so in this video we'll just take it as a previously proven result. Okay, now it's not too hard, even for me with my terrible arithmetic, to figure out what the new q and r are going to be. The new q is negative 2 and the new r is 0. So in this case we see that 6 divides 6 and 6 divides negative 12. And that means that 6 is not is a common divisor of negative 12 and 6, and in fact the greatest common divisor, because anything that divides it will have to divide 6 as well. And so using our previous fact, we get that it's the GCD of 18 and negative 12. Okay, so on the next slide, what we're going to do is we're going to use our equations. Ah, I lied, sorry. I'm going to tell you first why this algorithm terminates. And that's because the remainder strictly decreases in each iterate, iterated step of this algorithm, and it has to be non-zero. So if it's going to decrease and decrease and decrease, it has no option but to eventually be zero. And at that point, we stop what we're doing. Okay, now on this slide, I'm going to take equation one and equation two. From these, I want to find integers a and b so that I can write 6 equals 18a plus negative 12b. Well, this is actually not hard to do from equation 1. If we just look at equation 1, we're going to solve for 6. And we get 6 is 18 times 1 minus 12 times negative 1, or 18 times 1 plus negative 12 times 1. So a and b are both 1. Okay. That's kind of the best case scenario where you hit upon your GCD in the first step. In this next example, we're going to find the GCD of two larger numbers. It will take us, I don't know, something like five equations to do it. And then we're going to find the coefficients a and b so that we can write the GCD as a combination of 245 and 96. So again, we start by using the division algorithm. So we write 245 as a multiple of 96 plus a remainder. In this case, the multiple is 2, and the remainder is 53. And I checked that with a calculator, as I did all the rest of these calculations, so you should feel fairly confident in them, as I do. Um, now the next thing that we're going to do is repeat this process a few times. So now we write 96 as um, a multiple of 53 plus a remainder to satisfy the division theorem. We get a new equation that way. We repeat. We have 53 is 1 times 43 plus 10, 43 is 4 times 10 plus 3, 10 is 3 times 3 plus 1, and 3 is 3 times 1 plus 0. And we're done because we hit upon a 0 remainder. All right. 
the last non-zero remainder is 1, so the GCD of 245 and 96 is 1. And in class, or in the class where you learned about this, you probably recall that in this case we call 245 and 96 relatively prime. Okay, let's recapture these equations so that we can use them in this next step. What we are going to do on this slide is figure out how to use equations five through one in order to kind of work our way back up to one as a combination of 245 and 96. So before we get into it, let me give you kind of an overview of what we're gonna do. As we did in the previous example, previous example, we're gonna take the equation before we got to our zero remainder, in this case, equation five, and solve it for one. And so now we have one written in terms of 10 and three. Then I'm gonna use equation four to replace three as a combination of 43 and 10. And then I'll use equation three to write 10 as a combination of 53 and 43. And equation two to write 43 as a combination of 96 and 53. And by the time I get to equation one, I'm rewriting 53 as a combination of 245 and 96. So at the end of the day, I have one as a multiple of 96 plus a multiple of 245. So let's go through that process together. So as I said, starting with equation five and solving for one, we have one is 10 minus three times three. Now I'm gonna use equation four, and equation four gives me that three is 43 minus four times 10. So I'm gonna replace my three with 43 minus four times 10. Now I'm gonna simplify so that I'm collecting my tens and 43s. So I have 13 times 10 minus three times 43. And then I see that I'm going to use equation three to replace 10. So I have 13 times 53 minus 43, minus three times 43, using the equation three and substituting in for 10. And again, I'm gonna simplify by collecting my 53s and 43s. So I have 13 times 53 minus 16 times 43. Now I'm gonna use equation two to substitute for 43. So where I have 43s, I'll replace them with 96 minus 53. And so I have 13 times 53 minus 16 times 96 minus 53, and I simplify. I use equation one to substitute in for 53, and finally, after I do all of my simplifications and collect my 245s and 96s together, I see that one up at the top can be written as 29 times 245 minus 74 times 96. So what this does for me is I use my equations from the extended Euclidean algorithm as kind of a ladder to go from the GCD at the bottom and replace successive remainders until I get to my original quotients at the top. So we've found that in this case, our coefficients are A equals 29 and B equals negative 74. And we're done. Now, of course, I always worry that I've done something weird with my arithmetic, so I did actually check this. Um, 29 times 245 is 7105. Negative 74 plus 96 is, oops, negative 7104. And so when I add these together, I do indeed get one. <laughs>